Jesus appears to me and he had a big smile on his face and it was like almost like he was chuckling. And I'm like, you can't be happy with me. Look at how I'm living. And, and he didn't say anything. He just beckoned me to hug him and he was still smiling and laughing. I went over and I fell on his neck and hugged him. And the words that came out of his mouth was, Joe, you turned your back on me, but I never turned my back on you. Even as a young child, I had an affinity towards boys my age. I was intimidated by them, but I was drawn to them all the time. Well, I was called the name Sissy, and I liked being around my mom more than I liked being around my dad. Started growing up and then became sexually aware, then that attraction became sexual. I think I just graduated high school right in there. I felt the need to be honest. He said, I think uh, I like men rather than women. And I said, son, don't you know what the scripture says about that? I was born again. I was spirit filled. I had read the Bible all my life and I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know what to do with all these feelings. I just assumed God wouldn't be very happy with me and I kind of put God on a shelf. Me and my brother were very, very close. And then when he got to that lifestyle, he became very sarcastic, very domineering. I would stay out all night. I didn't follow any of the house rules or anything like that. And I'd come home and my mom would be getting ready for work. She would say, it sure is late for coming home. And I would joke at her. I'd say, no, it's actually really early in the morning. And I started dating and I started sleeping around and I drank like a fish and clubs and hookups. This was in the height of the AIDS epidemic. I didn't care if I caught it. One day I just said, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this. And I said, I'm just gonna have to turn him over to you because there's nothing I can do except pray for him. It was like the Lord said, finally, finally, you've let me have him. I will take care of it. I finally met a guy that I wanted to start dating regularly. We moved in together where I was laying there in bed and I could hear the Holy Spirit saying into my spirit, this is not who you are. And I was like, I, I told the, my partner at the time, the guy was, we were together for about a year. I was like, you don't really know who I am. And I really tried to come out of the lifestyle with my own willpower. They let me move back home. And I would lay there in bed at night. I would look at the clock and I'd be like, I would be going out right now if I was still doing that. And I would just sit there and ache to go out and just, you know. And so it just didn't last. Basically what you, I was doing is I was trying to fix myself because I wanted to be pleasing to God and I thought God was angry with me. I thought he hated me. God is not mad at you. God is not bringing judgment on you. Jesus forever satisfied the wrath of God. My parents at that point went to Pastor Greg's church in Decatur. Andrew Womack's coming, some guy from Colorado. It's like, okay, I'll go listen to him. And we almost fell out of the pew. Jesus was so perfect, so pure, that for you to mix your effort with it pollutes it. It defiles it. You can't add to what Jesus has done. I took that and I said, okay, God, if you're not mad at me and if you love me unconditionally, then I'm going to go live where I want to. And I did. I moved to Florida because I just wanted to be near the beach. I wanted to be in the gayest community I could find. I just wanted to submerge, basically baptize myself in that lifestyle. The guy I was with, he was pretty, he had plenty of money started experimenting with drugs. I wanted to get high and I wanted to get laid and I wanted to do it multiple times a day, all day long, all night long. It was a four year heavy meth, ecstasy, whatever, anything I could get my hands on. I would pray, I say, Lord, I can't handle this. My heart hurts. Well, I was down to 140 pounds. My heart beat like 200 beats a minute for days. The light bulb in my head went on. It's like, you're not gonna last. I was out partying down in Miami and it was like seven in the morning and I ended up face down. My whole mind was erased. I couldn't remember my name. I couldn't remember where I was. I couldn't, I just looked at myself. I didn't even realize I was human. I could still hear the Holy Spirit say, Joe, I don't want you going out like this. I have something better for you. So I just said, Lord, if you want me out, you're going to have to do it 
you're going to have to rescue me. When gay people are portrayed in TV shows and movies, they're usually the goofy one. They're very funny, which gay people are very funny. They don't show the loneliness. There's an extreme loneliness in that lifestyle. And my heart would be broken, or I would break that guy's heart, or both. And you know, just that over and over. What I was looking for is somebody to complete me and fulfill me. There was only one man that could do what I was looking for. I was dead from being out all night, and I was strung out, and I was just laying there flipping through the channels. Here Jesus appears to me. He had his arms open like this, and he had a big smile on his face, and it was like almost like he was chuckling. And I'm like, you can't be happy with me. Look at how I'm living. And, and he didn't say anything. He just beckoned me to hug him, and he was still smiling and laughing. And not laughing at me, but laughing full of joy. And I, I went over and I fell on his neck and hugged him and he embraced me. And the words that came out of his mouth was, Joe, you turned your back on me, but I never turned my back on you. And when he said that, I thought about all the places. I took him to all those clubs, to the sex clubs, to the you know, nightclubs, all the hookups. He didn't participate with me in it, but he was there with me. And you know, I didn't move out the next day and I was still struggling with everything. But that, just that grace, that started a solidifying of our relationship. And I told God, I was like, Lord, I'm not gonna live in the cage of Christianity, always wanting what's outside those bars. Meaning I'm not gonna pine away for homosexual lifestyle or hooking up or anything. It's like, it's gotta be eradicated. He said, okay, Here's what I want you to do. I want you, because you can't handle living, you can't be surrounded or baptized or submersed in that community there, is I want you to move back home. In my conversations with my mom, she's like, well, what makes it different this time? And I said, I can't make any guarantees. I was living hour by hour. I, I couldn't even make a promise for the next day because I could have changed my mind and moved right back. No problem. And so, you know, she was so gracious, she just, you know, she just accepted that. I said, well, just come on, just as fast as you can get here, get here. And I said, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> I would have days where I was tempted at the gas station. I was tempted at the grocery store. And I was like, Lord, I'm just, I'm tired of being tempted everywhere I go. And he said, well, Joe, he goes, I'm not gonna remove every guy off the face of the earth so you won't be tempted. What I'll do is I will help you change on the inside. There are people watching this program that you're desiring change, and yet you've been praying for it, you've been longing for it, you may have cried for it, you may have begged for it, pleaded for it, but have you taken the seed that produces the change, the seed of change, and have you put it in your heart? If you will do that, the Word of God will automatically begin to start producing change over a period of time. I knew that I needed to go to Bible college. When I was living in that homosexual lifestyle, I wanted to be submerged. Flip side, the Lord's rescued me, and now I want to be submerged. You listen long enough to the true Word of God filtered through the finished work of Jesus Christ, it will change you. Jesus Christ is the only one that can satisfy you as a husband or a wife. That's the way God made it. At first, I was like, oh, Lord, I can't see you as being married to you in the spirit. Marriage <laughs> pertains, uh, contains a lot of things, and, and I don't want to, you know, basically, I don't want to pervert you in any way, Lord. I don't want to think of you as my husband. He said, Joe, when you come to me, you don't make me unclean. He goes, I'll make you clean. And he's like, just opened up his arms, and it's like, hug me. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if you have weird feelings, because I don't. And it was just like those people in the Bible that he touched the woman with the issue of blood and he didn't become dirty, but the woman became clean. And he gives you his desires. And when he puts his desires in it, you start wanting what God wants. Karis Bible College just solidified that. Come on, it's here for you. This is the good stuff. Come on, put some at this end too. I don't want to do a bunch of drugs. I don't want to live the homosexual lifestyle. I don't want to participate in any of that. And But before, that's all I wanted to do. And man, I moved heaven and earth to make sure I did it. 
It'll be 20 years since I've been out of that lifestyle. And you know what? It's because the Lord is my heavenly husband and he's the man that I always needed and the man that I always wanted. You know, I learned so much from Joe. He has so much understanding of the Word. He's always there to pray and, and encourage me to, you know, go on. I work at the ministry here and I love it. I'm a partner relations minister. I get mothers whose children are struggling with homosexuality. I can hear her voice start breaking when I say, listen, what the Lord did for my crying and praying mama, he'll do for you. Just give them over to the Lord. Whatever you do, do that. Speak life and not death. When you start worrying, just say, nope, nope, nope. Give it back over to the Lord every time. And it works, it just works. Andrew planted the seed of God's grace and unconditional love. And it took nine years. But you know, grace is a long work. I misinterpreted grace. I almost killed myself doing it. But God never says, okay, I'm not gonna be gracious to you anymore. You've, you've run out of it. It has an endless supply. It's fresh every day, fresh grace, fresh forgiveness, fresh mercy, fresh healing every day. You can come to Jesus if you're in the homosexual lifestyle. You can come to him if you're still hooking up. You can come to him if you're addicted to drugs, if you're addicted to alcohol. You can come to him because he's the one that cleans you. It's an ever-flowing fountain.